Hello, my name is Robin Stanislaw, City Clerk for the City of Huntington Beach. In honor of Women's History Month, it is my pleasure to welcome you to this edition of Flashback, featuring Reflections of Former Mayors, Ruth Bailey, which was filmed in 1992. Like countless others, she migrated to the region with her family, arriving here when she was only 12 years old. As a young woman, she was inspired to join the League of Women Voters where she became interested in participating in government and encouraged young people to become active in civics too. Ruth served on the council from 1978 to 1986, serving twice as mayor during that time. Campaigning with the one word slogan, Truth, Ruth was elected in 1979 and again in 1983. A hallmark of her efforts was the creation of a youth board and a youth shelter, both of which remain today. Ruth was a founding member of the Amigos de Bolsa Chica and our sister city program and helped Norma Gibbs create Interval House to help battered women. Many other important events occurred during her tenure. Ruth passed away at her Huntington Beach home in 2006. She was 80 years old. In sharing this film, we honor the service of this remarkable woman. Thank you for watching. Hello and welcome to Reflections by former Huntington Beach mayors. This is brought to you by the City of Huntington Beach Cable Channel 3. I'm Dr. Tom Cooper, your host for this program. And it's my pleasure to introduce to you our guest, the honorable former two-term mayor of Huntington Beach, Ruth Bailey. Welcome, Ruth. Thank you, Tom. I'm really happy to be here again. <laughs> uh, I'm pleased that you're able to be with us today. <clears throat> I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, uh, what kind of things you were involved in before you ran for city council and some of the issues that were uh, prevalent that time. You mean right before I ran right or do you want me to go back yeah, to... Yeah, just <laughs> tell us a little bit about yourself first. Forty-five years of marriage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not a native Californian, but I did come out here when I was 12 to Long Beach. I got married when I was 16 and a half. <laughs> I uh, had three children and uh, took them through PTA, Campfire Girls, and that's how I got involved in volunteer types of activity. So I worked for about 10 years at uh, Sears Roebuck and Company, and then I decided I wanted to spend some time in the community when we moved to Huntington Beach. I joined the League of Women Voters. And that's where I became involved in government, and uh, it's a wonderful training ground for people who, who want to learn about it and how to be um, active and participate in your city. So I got a lot of my good training there. And uh, from there I was uh, appointed to the Human Resources Board, and I was on that for several years um, and chairman of it and also the Public Facilities Corporation. So I, I, again, got to do things to know the city more. Mm -hmm. And then I was appointed to the committee that uh, was at that time investigating the city administrator. And uh, I got a lot of more insight about the city and became so interested that uh, I felt that I should, should be a council member. You mentioned this committee uh, investigating at that time, uh, the city administrator, that was a city council appointed uh, committee? Yes, it was, what, yes. What was the function of this committee in, in terms of the investigation that you were conducting? Well, um, actually we were looking at all of the um, evidence that came before us and evaluating it and then making a recommendation to the city council from what, you know, we interviewed a lot mm. of people that were involved in everything. Was that information public or was this a, a behind a, closed door type well, committee? Well, yes, it was behind okay. closed door type things. It was well, confidential. Yeah. Uh, see. What kind of things did you do with uh, the Human Resources uh, Board? 
Well, it's um, a very active board mm -hmm. now, and uh, it has been, but uh, actually uh, they identify the needs of the people in the city to the city council, make recommendations to um, help the different groups that have, you know, the boys and girls and the uh, health needs, the seniors, uh, the youth, and uh, they have the responsibility of recommending the allocation of the uh, HCD funds, mm -hmm. the block grant funds. And so they, they really um, are in tune with what, what our city really needs in the human uh, aspects of sure. it. And they do represent the different, some of them represent the different agencies and others are members at large. Now you mentioned that uh, uh, you have raised three children and uh, right. I'm, uh, I, I assume they went through the school district here in Huntington Beach or at least well, some of the Well, Long schools. Beach and Huntington okay, Beach. Okay, Long yeah, Beach and right. Huntington Beach. Uh -huh. What are their names and what are they doing now? Oh, well, uh, Pam is the oldest, Pam Dos. They're all married. Mm -hmm. You said their ages, did you say? No. No, their names. Okay, I'm <laughs> going to tell they're you their doing now. Okay, they're, they're watch, married. Uh, married. No, that's okay. <laughs> um, they're three girls, and mm -hmm. uh, she, they're, uh, they live in Orange, and she has two boys, and um, she does volunteer work. She doesn't have a specific job that she mm -hmm. does. And my middle daughter um, lives in Long Beach. She has one son, and she's going through, um, she just graduated from Long Beach State. Uh, she went back to school after a few years, and she's going to be teaching uh, phys ed science. And then my youngest daughter lives in San Bernardino. Her name's Renille. And uh, she, um, she does word processing and consulting and things like that. When you first started to get involved in running for an elected, the elected position, mm -hmm. uh, did your children work with you? Did your family work together or were they kind of, oh. how, how did they function with you? Very much we all worked together. Um, they, they kind of volunteered, you know, <laughs> how it is. <laughs> but uh, of course, we've always done things as a family sure. and um, we didn't know what it was all about at the time, so we really needed all all of that kind of help we could get and uh, they helped make signs and and walk neighborhoods and put out literature and my one son-in-law is an artist and so he designed my logo and things like that so uh, and my other son-in-law is a cabinet maker so he helped with signs you know and so without Sherwood you know my husband uh, we I couldn't have done it at all mm -hmm. so we pretty much ran our own campaign now, I can remember that being kind of a family-oriented campaign, or at right. least when I was familiar with it, and, and so... We were uh, very naive, too, at the time. Well, <laughs> I remember it, it, that. you won your first try, though. Oh, yes, I did. <laughs> but I Let's, had been involved with other campaigns, sure. so that helped a little bit. Sure. <laughs> uh, what kind of things uh, were you involved with as far as uh, the uh, uh, Women's League of Voters? Well, one of the first uh, jobs that I took on was the, um, the voter um, education program, I'm trying to think the exact name, that wasn't it. And we put on candidate meetings. Okay. And uh, the league uh, really was the only group at that time that was doing that kind of thing, local, and, um, and then they did it, of course, nationwide after a while. And so that really got my feet wet on, on knowing about um, candidates and, and how they did things and mm -hmm. the league certainly was nonpartisan and so we always tried to bring the facts out and had the voters make up their mind about it and um, then I did it um, countywide too got into county government we have the county league and then state league and so it's, it's just like all the levels of government mm -hmm. that you get involved in so now we're up to 1978 and you're running okay. for City Council, mm -hmm. and there were some big issues in the year 1978, and some of the things that perhaps uh, were platform issues that you were involved in uh, mm -hmm. in terms of running for the office. You want to reflect on some of the issues of the day? Well, uh, Proposition 13 came mm -hmm. into being at the same time, and uh, I supported it, and um, not because uh, it was politically smart to do it at the time, but um, 
it made sense to me that I, that I felt that we could cut costs in the city, and I came in a little naive on that, too. But um, as it turned out, it worked out well because there were things that we shifted around. We had consolidations and uh, uh, made it work, and I think for the better in the long run. There were some problems with it, I know, and I, I know the city staff was not really happy about it. But it did make it more difficult for us to, to supply the services that were really needed. Mm -hmm. And things like the library kind of suffered because um, some people didn't think it was really necessary you know, to make sure that that, that was funded properly. Um, and then other issues were the mobile home issue. Um, I think at that time there was a lot of movement towards rent control and um, how the mobile homes were, uh, parks were being run and, and that kind of thing and the threat of conversion uh, and uh, some senior issues uh, which I got involved in um, and the Bolsa Chica wetlands, the preservation of that which I had been involved in since I was in the League of Women Voters. Uh, it was one of the issues that uh, we uh, studied. So um, I think those were the biggest How issues. How about downtown redevelopment? Um, was that a That was an issue, but it wasn't something that was coming up real strong at that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you, you had mentioned your involvement with regards to uh, the former city a uh, city administrator, city mm -hmm. manager, right. and there was a transition point there where one of our in-house uh, staff people, as I recall, became city manager for at least a short period of time. Mm -hmm. uh, that was Bud Belsito, as right. I recall. Right, he, he was appointed. Uh -huh. Now, after you were on the city council for, I believe it was two years, you were then selected uh, by council to, mm -hmm. to be mayor. Right. Uh, did you find your role as mayor and your interaction with the city manager to be different uh, or any different than as a, a regular member of the city council? Uh, I think with all staff, uh, when you become mayor, uh, you have a little different um, feel and, and you have a lot more um, contact, shall we say, mm -hmm. because as mayor, I felt like I should have uh, some control over how the meetings were run <laughs> and the agenda and um, things such as that. So I think you have a lot more contact with uh, the city administrator and um, other than that they may treat you a little bit differently because you're mayor and they call you mayor but you know you really aren't any different you, d you only have one vote so mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but I, d I did find that I had more contact that way. Mm -hmm. What was your involvement uh, uh, then in terms of the selection of the new city administrator? Uh, what was the process that that we went through there in the city? Okay, uh, I think when I was mayor at that time we formed a mayor's committee mm -hmm. uh, between two other council members, the past mayor and, and the mayor pro tem. Uh, so that we would sit down and talk to the city administrator periodically to uh, go over some of the things that we felt the council was concerned with. And uh, when we did that, we made notes of certain things that, that we felt needed to be improved or, or whatever. And so we, we started it that way, and uh, then when we uh, felt that we needed a, a new administrator, uh, we felt that we needed to go out into a broader area you know, throughout the country to find someone because we, we are a very large city and we really felt we needed um, someone that had experience and um, so we hired a firm to uh, a cer that searches for this kind of thing and they came in and they interviewed all the council members and um, then they, they went out and advertised and brought uh, people back to us and they had cut it down to um, maybe five or six uh, people who, who we could look at and interview and we did that and then we came up with the new administrator. You mentioned uh, the size of the city. It was re 
looking over uh, some past minutes and material uh, uh, with population mm -hmm. uh, information there, and, and it seems as if we almost went into a little bit of a slower growth period, uh, beginning at about the the latter latter 70s. At one time uh, in the 60s and yeah. the early 70s, the city was growing about 10,000 a year or something yeah. like that, and then. From 78 to uh, 85 or 86, uh, we grew about 20,000. So there was a kind of a slower growth. But mm -hmm. was that a conscious thing? <laughs> or uh, were you involved in any? Uh, uh, no, I don't think so. At that uh -huh. time, uh, there there was no uh, organized effort, uh, or by the community or the council, to do that. That I n remember. Okay. Um, I think perhaps when everybody came out, when we did in 64, 65, between that and 78, uh, it was affordable to come out and buy a house in Orange County, and, and really Huntington Beach was a great place to come. Uh, then I think the land became more valuable, and uh, it wasn't as affordable, so maybe that's one of the reasons. Then the other reason is um, there's only a, a, so much land left to develop in the city, and a lot of it, of course, is in our downtown area and the oil fields. So we couldn't build on along the coast because we didn't have a local coastal plan at that time. So that probably has a lot to do with why mm -hmm. it did. Uh -huh. You mentioned the coast. It was kind of interesting, and I remember this as a <laughs> member of the uh, Recreation Parks Commission, uh, formerly myself. Uh, I saw something in the minutes during your term of office, your first term of office, about the Coppertone trash receptacles oh. on the beach. <laughs> I believe you're an advocate of uh, that, or I believe, I, well, I think that was yeah. the case. When, How did that come uh, about? Uh -huh. uh, do, do you recall? I don't think it was something that I initiated okay. or anything. Um, we were trying to save money, <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> and that was one of the ways, uh, and it was offered to us, and, and we thought, gee, you know, that's a great idea. We would do that. Of course, the beach is one of my favorite places, so. You Anything spend time at the beach? That. Yes, I do. Uh -huh. Anytime I can, I drive along the beach and look at it, or I get out and take a walk, I use the bike trails. How about the pier? And definitely the I pier. I know you were, <laughs> you were involved with the pier back uh, after its uh, reconstruction. Uh, the end of the pier uh, was destroyed in the 83 uh, uh, waves. And, right, and, and it was 85 when it finally was refurbished. Okay. Yeah. So that, and you were mayor at that time I was also. mayor at that time. Mm -hmm. And we had a very big celebration on the pier. I remember we were all very proud, very happy, and the end cafe. And um, it was something that took a long time, and the community really was behind it. So we were, you know, were very happy to have it. And then, unfortunately, <laughs> this, this past January, uh, we had another storm, and uh, mm -hmm. I'm not certain what's going to happen with uh, with the reconstruction of the, the end of the pier that was lost then. Right. Well, uh, looking back, mm -hmm. you know, some of the things I, I tried to remember, some of the concerns we had, and of course one of them was we didn't really want a two-story restaurant. Uh, we didn't feel that that was um, compatible with the pier, um, but we did get it. And because of that, we had to reinforce more heavily, use extra pilings, and um, it cost a lot more money, and that's why it took longer. Uh, at the time, we knew that the rest of the pier also needed some work done on it because we'd had a study several years before that that showed, you know, that even the concrete pilings and everything uh, were breaking off, and, and that's why we have a net underneath it. So we really need to look at the entire pier. Mm -hmm. And at that time, um, I guess we felt uh, we didn't have the money to do it. Uh, I think now uh, the council should look a lot more in depth on what they do with it and take everything into consideration. With regards, again, to the beach area, mm -hmm. uh, I remember you were quite involved and, uh, and interested in the bluff top uh, area oh, and, yeah. and the development of that area. You want to reflect on that? Yes, it's, it's one of the things that I'm most proud of. And of course, I didn't do it myself, that's for sure. But um, all of us got 
behind it, and of course the parks and, and recreation people. Mm -hmm. I think were um, not quite sure it was a park, and they weren't <laughs> yeah, as involved as you would have liked to have been. <laughs> but it, it really, uh, really does a lot to to our, you know, coming into the city and seeing that instead of the old oil wells the way they were. And I think uh, you know the county was involved, and I. I remember uh, Harriet and I coming down with our bicycles and opening the bike trail there in the beach. But Harriet, Harriet Weeder, yeah, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so I, I'm looking forward for it to be continued the rest of the way. Of course, I will say the oil companies were very cooperative, and uh, I think with our downtown redevelopment, we're going to be able to to finish it. And it's it's really used a lot. It's it's really nice. I'm proud of that. A couple other issues, and I'm not sure what happened with these uh, particular issues. One was, uh, and you mentioned Harriet, uh, Supervisor mm -hmm. Weeder. Mm -hmm. uh, I recall a number of years ago that that she was involved with with regards to some flood control mm -hmm. issues, uh, and I'm not sure if that was during your term of office of mayor. Or, well, of course, it happened that? in '83 when okay. when we had the flood, and we all got interested in it. And uh, being a council member, you serve on other boards throughout the county, like the sanitation district, which I served on, and uh, got involved in in several committees uh, with the county, trying to work out what we were going to do about flood control, yeah. But that's, that's an ongoing thing, it's still mm -hmm. ongoing, but I think it's being resolved. As mayor, you're often called upon to do a variety of things that mm -hmm. other members of the council may not necessarily be involved in, including, as you've just mentioned, serving on some committees, either uh, local or county or statewide mm -hmm. or even national. Right. What kind of involvement uh, were you called upon as, as mayor to be involved in in, in uh, other kinds of things that, that outside was the city yes. activities. Well, the sanitation district I was on for for the eight years that, uh, mm -hmm. and I was chairman of District 11. There, it's actually one district, but broken up in uh, districts geographically. And um, then um, I'm trying to remember, um, I served on the Orange uh, Orange County Solid Waste mm -hmm. Commission which is also hazardous waste now. Um, League of Cities uh, committees that I served on. And um, statewide, there was one uh, environmental uh, committee that I served on. Uh, I don't believe I was in any national committees. Uh, I was a member of SCAG, Southern mm -hmm. California Association of Governments, um, and used to go to those meetings. Uh, Hmm. Well, you were quite several, busy. Several different ones. Yeah. And then we have um, um, a group, the elected women's group, that mm -hmm. uh, I was involved in also. So you're very busy. You know, mm -hmm. one of the things that I wanted to mention to you that, uh, that I was always impressed with, with regards to the time that you served in office, any time that, that I ever had an occasion to meet with you, uh, perhaps when you were running for your campaign or while you were in office, was you always seemed to have done your homework. <laughs> and you're always prepared, and, and I think that was certainly one of the, the things that I admired in you. Uh, you initiated, I think, some other things, or you were involved in, in them at, uh, at any rate. Pride Committee. Right, and right. You, I was what was that? Uh, that was two years ago, I think it was. Um, it was a com uh, partnership between the Chamber and the City, and it was to promote um, things in the city that we were already proud of, but maybe a lot of people didn't know about it, and to promote other activities that would show what our city is all about and the people and everything. And it involved a steering committee of 12 people, six of the chamber and six uh, of city members. And we had co-chairman Art Avilas and myself were chairman. And uh, we had monthly uh, activities uh, and they were broken up into uh, different um, activities in the city, such as Seniors Month, Youth Month, um, Education Month, and uh, Religion Month. You know, everything. Mm -hmm. We tried to hit everything. And in that way, we involved um, a lot of other volunteers in it because there was a chairman for each month, and then that person got another chairman and then the chairman had a committee. So, 
and then we gave out certificates. Mm -hmm. We tried to attend a lot of all the activities that were going on. We had t-shirts and a uh, wonderful logo. And uh, I just came from a meeting today that the, uh, the Pride Committee is no longer functioning that okay. way because we felt, you know, we'd done a beautiful year. We couldn't repeat that for another year. Mm -hmm. uh, but the um, Health Services Committee of the Chamber is combining with some of the Pride members to put on another uh, health walk which we did last year and it was real successful and so we're still kind of working that way. Good. And we still use our logo and everything. Uh, as you notice on our set here we have a, a couple of flags <laughs> from other countries which reminds right. us of our sister city program. What was your involvement in that? Well um, I was on the council at the time. I think the first um, mayor was Ruth Finley who met with our um, Japanese friends and they wanted to form the Sister City Association uh, with, I mean, a uh, relationship with them of Anjo, Japan. Previous to that, there was a sister city in, in Watamata, New Zealand, but they weren't, it hadn't been active for a while. The committee had, our Sister City Association had not been active for a while. And so uh, she initiated this other one. So then we had two sister cities. And uh, then we got a group of people who were interested in, and we started the association again. Um, my husband and I both were very interested in traveling and knowing people from other countries, and so we got involved as members, and I was a representative um, from the city. Uh, and um, then it's, it's really going in full force mm -hmm. now. We exchange students back and forth with both um, Watamata and Anjo every year and uh, a lot of the council members have gone to Japan and we were fortunate enough to do that one year and we also went to New Zealand I think about two years ago and uh, it's, it's a lasting friendship and it's also exchanging cultural um, things like, like uh, different children's paintings and artists you know other artists and mm -hmm. So I would say I was pretty much involved, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. As you look back, both as mayor and member of the city council, uh, can you think of any, anything that you consider is probably or possibly your most outstanding experience uh, or your worst experience? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, um, I think uh, the thing I'm most proud of mm -hmm. are, are the the Bluff Top Park and um, some of the things that Emerald Cove, for instance, that is the development for the seniors, affordable housing. Uh, that was something that I, I worked with and I think when I was mayor it opened up. You know, you can be on the council and then you can be mayor and this issue you're working on doesn't sure. happen until yeah. two or three years later. Sure. And that's one of the worst things I think in being a council member is that um, you do work hard and you look forward to something happening such as redevelopment and it, uh, it just doesn't happen for a long time so I learned patience but I'm not real happy with it. Um, one of the things I think I'm probably famous for is the longest meeting we ever had. Uh, <laughs> it lasted till four o'clock in the morning and the reason, one of the reasons is that it was the local coastal plan that we were working on and we had worked for quite a while on it and we must have had a deadline or something, I can't remember, but we wanted to get finished that night and everybody was willing to stay and we did and we finished it. Did the audience stay? Some of them did, <laughs> yeah, there were a few, I, I'm sure. And then I've had some shorter meetings, but um, communication is one of the things I, I tried to, to push and, I, um, and that meant with the community and with staff, among council members, and of course Channel 6 is one of the best ways to communicate. And I think it grew in those years too. I'm not mm -hmm. sure what the first year was, but um, I, did, I did serve on, on that committee also when we were first getting the, the cable, as I remember back. I think it's Channel 3. It now. was Channel 6 was channel then. Six, yeah. yes. Yeah, thank you for correcting me <laughs> on that. I have a pen that says that too. But um, 
I think in that, that the community, every time you go out in the community now, people still recognize me mm -hmm. and say, you know, I watch you on, yeah. on cable and I really enjoy those programs. And I had a Kids Meet the Mayor program. I don't know if you knew mm -hmm. that, but uh, that was something I, uh, I thought was really good. And they were third and fourth graders, I think they were. And they did a tour of City Hall at the same time, and they came and asked the mayor questions. Mm -hmm. And they really asked some great questions. So I, um, I really thought that was a good program. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did have a mayor's breakfast where the different community organizations mm -hmm. would come and, and meet. And um, Yeah, you had a very active uh, role in a, in a lot of things. I know that. And, but you've been off the council now for uh, a little over a year, I guess. Yes, and, it is. Uh, uh -huh. Uh, we have just short time left here that we can chat, but uh, what kind of things are you involved in? What are you doing now, and uh, what about the future? Okay. First thing, before I forget, I, I am on Channel 3 uh, and Reaching Out program. Um, mm -hmm. I haven't done it for a few months, but I'm going to be doing it again. Uh, the other thing that I'm doing is um, making a living <laughs> by uh, being a governmental consultant. Mm -hmm. And um, some people say, what is that? <laughs> uh, it, what it is is the knowledge that I gained by being a member of the council all these years, I think is very, very important to people who want to do business with the city. And I find uh, um, that I can be helpful that way. So I do that. Uh, I'm working uh, as a member of the patrons board, the library patrons board, in helping to uh, expand the children's wing of the library. So we're working it's on that. Keep very you busy. Hard. Yes, it's keeping me busy, as well as a board member of the Friends of the Library. And um, I think I'm doing a little too much right now, but I also am uh, just a new member of the uh, Girls and Boys Club board. And uh, I serve on a chamber, the chamber committee of the um, governmental relations. Uh, you sound like a person who's <laughs> retired and they're busier now than they ever were. <laughs> well, that's true. Um, I'm more fragmented than uh, when you're on the council, you, you go into all these different areas, but you don't have a lot of time to spend, you know, doing that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm also doing a few things for fun. I'm, uh, I'm taking a tap class <laughs> and uh, a jazzercise, trying to get myself back in shape is what I'm trying to do. <laughs> and. Um, some other things along those lines. Any anything in the, the political arena on the horizon for the future? Well, um, you know, I think when you become a politician, the time um, that you run for office is very important. So, if the opportunity is there and the time is right, um, who knows? <laughs> well, good. And on that note, we're gonna. <laughs> Go ahead and, and close and really thank you for being here with us today. I really appreciate you taking well, your time. Well, thank you, Tom. I think these programs are great. great. Thank you. And thank you for letting us come into your home with this program. And a special thanks again to our honorable former Mayor Ruth Bailey. This program has been produced by the City of Huntington Beach Cable Channel 3. And in the weeks to come, we'll be looking at highlights in the lives of other past mayors of Huntington Beach. We hope you'll join us. This is Dr. Tom Cooper bidding you a good day.